So hello, everyone. Good evening, good morning, wherever you are in Canada and across the world. A very warm welcome from Huron University and thank you for attending our alumni masterclass series today focusing on the business sector. My name is Mustafa Ez. I'm an alumnus of Huron University and also the Director of International Recruitment and Strategy here. I'll be moderating today's session with our wonderful panelists. We're lucky to be joined today by uh, many of our alumni who are in different industries and subparts of the business sector from consulting, advisory, tech, investment management, and more. Joining us here today is Drew Sussman, M&A Advisory at Deloitte, Nawaz Sani from Scotia McLeod Associate, and Kaya Schumacher from Chief of Staff at MasterCard. So we're going to begin today's panel discussion by doing some introductions. So if we could begin by having you introduce yourselves for two minutes, let the audience know what you studied at Huron, what roles have you held since graduation, and what is your current role? Kaya, we'll begin with you. Thanks. Yeah, it's really nice to meet everyone and um, looking forward to spending some time with you tonight. So, yeah, Kaya Schumacher, I studied global studies at Huron, globalization studies, and I actually did a dual degree with Ivy Business School as well, but felt that it was really important to stick with Huron um, throughout. Um, for the past five years, I've worked for MasterCard, so I started my career there right after graduating, and I initially had more client-facing roles, so working as part of the consulting team, um, working my way up from different, more of like a project team member to being, to leading projects and engagements to leading teams, and for the last year and a half, um, I've also been chief of staff for the advisors team. So I can talk a little bit more about what that means on a day-to-day -day basis um, a little bit later on, but it's a more internal facing role, all about you know, business strategy, business planning, working really closely um, to communicate about our, our part of the business and work with our investor relations team. So um, that's a little bit about what I'm working on now. Uh, it's exciting to be a part of a global team, even had a chance to work internationally for a few months. So. Um, yeah, really nice to meet everyone and looking forward to your questions. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Nawaz, would you like to go next? Uh, I'll let Drew take this one, actually. All right. He wants to uh, save the best for last, I guess, over there. Uh, thanks very much, Moose, and, and thank you very much, everyone, for joining us um, this evening. My name is Drew Sussman. I'm a graduate uh, of the class of 2017. Uh, which seems uh, like quite a long time ago now, even though it uh, wasn't, I suppose. Uh, I studied, uh, I did an honor specialization in political science and world, a minor in world history. Uh, after I graduated, I went down to the States, to North Carolina, to Duke University for business school, uh, after which I came back to Canada, took a role as an associate at a public policy and management think tank. Um, and from there, I, uh, I joined Deloitte uh, in their advisory practice doing mergers and acquisitions work. So for anyone on the call that doesn't know exactly what that is, mergers and acquisitions essentially entails buying and selling of companies or assets by other companies. Um, so that's all I'll say about me for now. I guess if I could add one more remark before I pass the torch here, just that, you know, I understand this is designed for prospective students. Um, I think, you know, everyone who's joined the call, you're doing a really, really fantastic thing by, by engaging with, with different institutions and learning as much as you can. And frankly, you're doing an even better thing by tuning into this presentation in particular. Huron's an amazing school and I, I hope our, our panel today uh, is able to, to say some things and, and give you some perspective that'll ultimately uh, help you choose Huron. Thanks guys. Thank you very much, Drew and Nawaz. I don't think I could have said it better, Drew. Uh, uh, my name is Nawaz Sani. Um, I'm a graduate of Huron University College, uh, graduated in 2018. Um, throughout my four years, I've been in some sort of internship, whether it's been in the office at Huron or the advancement office, uh, whether it's doing tours. As I went through my degree, I just got more involved at Huron, which kind of got me to experience a lot of different fields. Um, I did settle on finance and turns out that there was an internship available for a finance role, uh, which landed me at Scotia McLeod as an intern. Uh, this is about four years ago now, weirdly enough. Um, time goes by fast. Um, 
I've been working there as an intern the first two years. So I did my third and fourth year at Scotia McLeod part-time while finishing up my school. Uh, one of the things that I learned was that there's industry requirements for getting a job that's a little more involved uh, where you're giving more advice and you're dealing with money. So part of the thing was taking on extra courses outside of school, which I mean, it was an extra workload, but definitely worth it. Um, I did my courses and it allowed me to just continue on and actually secure a full-time job there. So I've been working there since my second year. And at this point, I'm an associate social club. Wonderful, and thank you very much, Nawaz. So uh, we're going to do our uh, round of questions now. Many of you submitted questions in advance, which we'll be sure to ask today. I also want the audience to know that you can continue to ask live questions using the Q&A feature. And once we complete the pre-submitted questions, we'll get to answering your question for the panelists directly. So we'll stick to the same order, everyone. Kaya, Drew, and Nawaz for these questions, uh, and we'll keep it uh, we'll keep it a bit uh, brief now since we've, we've passed the introduction phase. So the first question is: What does a day in the life of your role look like? All right. So I guess guess I'm up first. <laughs> um, so I think you'll probably hear this from a lot of us, but no one day is quite exactly the same. So like from a physical standpoint, right now um, we're working from home still. So um, I'm, you know, at my, in my like home office here on a lot of Zoom calls, answering a lot of emails, working on different presentations and working with people, but um, my actual day-to-day -day can vary a lot. So I might one day be working on like a, a strategic project that we have. So um, we've been a part of our business where our services oriented. So we've got a recovery insights initiative. So if you want to learn about what I've been working on there, you can just Google MasterCard Recovery Insights and you can hear all about different insights that we've been putting out um, through the pandemic to help our partners. Um, so I might be having a meeting about a new piece of thought leadership that we're writing for that. Um, I might be writing talking points for um, a podcast that's coming out. I might be um, working on a presentation that our business group will present to the CEO. Um, talking about our performance. I might be working with our investor relations team to talk about what our business group has done over the last quarter. So it can really vary from a lot of different things from really strategic projects all the way down to like running a team meeting and talking to people and, and just like answering emails. So it's a little bit of the day in life. So nice to have that day-to-day -day diversity and different experiences. Yeah, each day. I really Keeps like the, <laughs> yeah, I like having every day of it being a bit different. Wonderful, that's great. Andrew? I would absolutely echo what Kaya just said. Every day is a, is a little bit different, right? Um, I think to, to you know, provide something extra, I think it, you know, folks who work in business like ourselves, generally speaking, day to day, you're probably doing one of only a handful of things, right? Or hour by hour, maybe I should say, you're either working on one of the Microsoft Office suites, right? So whether that's Word, PowerPoint, Excel, writing an email in Outlook. Um, and if you're not doing any one of those, you're probably interacting with another human being, whether that's over the phone, well, probably over the phone or over a Zoom call now, right? And, uh, you know, before nine months ago, it, it was a good chance it would be in a meeting or in person with a client as well. Um, so that's that's really the spread. And, and any business function, I would wager that that's probably the same and that just the, the ratio of how much time you spend on any one of those tasks changes from industry to industry. Um, you know, to give a little bit of color into what my day has been, my days have been like this week. Um, you know, we've been helping a client uh, that is looking at a company that they're they're considering bidding on to to purchase the company. That means that that you know I'm spending hours going over financial statements, looking at um, you know economic forecasts and growth projections uh, for the the company's target demographic. Uh, I'm assessing like the fundamentals of the business, right? The competitive landscape. I'm using that critical thinking that I developed at Huron, right folks? Uh, in my day-to-day -day job to actually help real life clients. Um, I know that was very subtle. Hopefully that that was a, a nice smooth transition. Um, and I, and I think you know the hours can be very long uh, in certain in certain industries, especially in you know when you're a, a young sort of uh, professional in a high octane environment. Um, and that's why it's very important to to learn as much as you can about different industries and try and go into uh, 
ones that you are actually genuinely interested in, in learning about um, and passionate about because it, it, it makes those long hours and, and uh, that learning experience a lot easier. Um, so that's a little bit of color into what, what my day-to-day -day is like. And, uh, you know, by the end of this week, I think I'll probably have worked 90 hours, but I'll have learned a lot from doing it. So it's worth it at the end of the day. I hope it is. For sure. And that's an excellent point about, you know, making sure you're passionate about your work. It'll definitely lead to satisfaction with your career. So thank you for that, Drew. Uh, Nawaz, did you say the same thing or any additional thoughts to make? No, that would be the same thing. I mean, yeah. with an environment like that, it does take a lot of hours and the hours are only worth it if you're passionate. I mean, you're going to be putting in 12 hour days. You might as well enjoy it, right? It's going to be fun. Uh, be a sponge. It'll be, it'll be worth it. But as Everybody said so far, uh, the day-to-day -day is a little scheduled, but at the same time, the structure changes every day, right? But essentially, it's just fielding client calls, uh, making sure we're meeting all of our meeting goals. Um, if clients need help right away, we're responding to them, right? The idea is that we're there to provide the service. Whatever they need, we're there to help. Uh, on that, my role is a little more operational where I get to provide support on preparing, um, I guess, whether it be um, portfolios for the client meeting, just updates on what we're doing, um, comments on what what the client should do. So I guess I just provide support in that way um, to my advisor and uh, associates. But in generally, it's all about taking calls. It's uh, all about being on the phone, talking to clients, because you can't really see them in person at this point. So the more you make yourself available on the phone, I guess the less work you have going on later on. Yeah, that absolutely makes sense. And that uh, human to human contact, right? It's not just, uh, you know, working at your own cubicle and not engaging with others, communication with others is absolutely a very key skill from what you're describing. So thanks for letting our audience know that. Now, you know, many members of our audience now are trying to picture themselves following perhaps in your footsteps or entering different careers in business. So we have some questions here, which are going to be very helpful for them to understand that. So my next question for all of our panelists is, what are the biggest challenges that you faced in your career so far and suggestions for future students who are interested in your sector? Again, same order, Kaya, Drew, and Nawaz. Okay. Um, yeah, that's a, good, that's a really good question. And I think, um, kind of comes to mind both from a personal standpoint as well as maybe a work standpoint. So for me, just in terms of challenges, I'd say from a personal standpoint, I actually just moved. So I moved from Ontario and I'm now based in Vancouver, BC. And so for me, like personally advocating for my move and kind of, you know, explaining why it was important for me to be out here, like that was a big challenge for me personally that took up a lot of my like, you know, personal time and, and thought into it. Um, I think from a business standpoint, I am very curious if it's similar across the board, but um, the, the COVID pandemic has really changed how we do business and how we work with our clients. So we did a ton of new initiatives over COVID and, you know, it, we had to be even more agile and more, um, you know, more accessible and work differently in order to kind of meet those challenges. So um, I was looking it up before this just to have some stats to share with you all. So um, in my group of business group, we, we have, through the COVID pandemic, we served over 700 clients, um, incoming, incoming and outgoing requests in 86 countries, and that's over, and over 200 cities and governments that was just related to the pandemic and providing them like services specifically for the pandemic. So that's a lot just within our group. Um, of stuff to keep track of and, and uh, client things to keep in the air. So that was definitely a challenge, um, a challenge for me, yeah. Thank you for those insights. And uh, Drew? Yeah, at the, at the outset of Kai's response there, she mentioned, you know, making a, a physical move, like a geographic move and how challenging that can be. I would sort of echo that sentiment, but for an industry, move as well for, for changing roles, um, especially I think it can be challenging early in your career. For me, after I left Huron and then after that business school, I came back to Canada, took a role that I spent a year in uh, and I, you know, would never disparage a former employer. I just wasn't, I just thought that that's not the direction I wanted to take my career in. Uh, so I said, okay, well, you know, what, what do I want to pivot to? 
Um, and the first step was establishing, okay, is there anything I like about my current role? And there, it, there was, there were certain aspects. So I said, okay, how can I sort of parlay that into something, something new? Uh, so I established some goals and then I said, okay, this is the industry, you know, mergers and acquisitions that I want to get in. I want to be doing it at a firm like Deloitte in a place like Toronto. So then you've got to get out and, and go and talk to people, right? And that can be really challenging. And, and I'm going to say something here and it's going to sound really cheesy and it's going to sound like I'm just going to be plugging here on the whole time, but that is what the attendees signed up for, right? Um, you know, you start with things like going back to your connections at Huron, right? That, that have a, a very deep uh, alumni database uh, where a lot of our alumni are doing very, very uh, amazing things with their careers, some very, very high ups in Fortune 500 companies and um, very successful people. And you go, uh, you know, talk to people that you've developed relationships with in the alumni department at, at Huron and you say, you know, you know me, you know I'm, I'm a trustworthy ambassador for Huron. Can you put me in touch with any of these people? Um, and I'm very pleased to say that because of the, the sort of close knit community that Huron fosters, Right, I did have that kind of rapport, thankfully, with administrators at Huron who were more than willing to set me up uh, for coffees in, you know, places like New York City with high-level, um, high-level high folks um, at, at financial institutions, people in Toronto. And when you network like that, eventually, um, you end up finding finding some leads, and it makes it makes the process of finding a new role that you know you're going to like, or you know, it's going to be a good fit, a whole lot easier. Uh, so it, it can be very challenging and it has been very challenging for me to pivot, but, you know, taking advantage um, of, of the Huron community and, and Huron alumni, the level of Huron alumni engagement has really made it all the, all the more easy for me. Absolutely. That's some fantastic advice, Drew. I think the alumni connections have definitely benefited us all. And I know uh, having attended Huron with all of you, we've each used that to our advantage in different ways. Uh, so Nawaz, what would you say, I mean, in terms of challenges facing your career so far and suggestions for future students who'd like to end up in a row similar to yours? Biggest challenges, uh, biggest one this year would have been the, the pandemic. Uh, it's definitely changed how we see everything, how we go to work, how we socialize. Um, it's been a big change, and but I guess with Drew being so subtle about pushing here on, I will say my part in it too. Uh, I guess the biggest realization for me was the fact that our team unanimously sat, decided to stay at work because the office was empty. So we were allowed to stay there. Uh, so working from the office and trying to distance yourself from everybody else to try to be safe, you kind of miss out on the whole social aspect of being at an office around people, right? Yeah, you're talking to clients on the phone, you're having Zoom meetings, but that in-person interaction, it's sort of, fulfills a part of it when you're you know, around people at the office. Uh, so I guess the biggest thing for me was realizing what was missing from that whole uh, situation. And it was the fact that when I was at Huron, I was working those same hours, right? It was the same hours, it was the same intensity. The only difference at Huron was the fact that I had joined a lot of clubs. Um, I was part of this great club called Volunteer Yeah. And every, I believe it was every second Thursday of the week, We'd go over to the First Baptist Church and serve uh, chili, chili and bread. Um, good time. Uh, you get to meet a lot of different people. Uh, it was a volunteer thing, so a lot of Huron students would come out. Um, it was a great opportunity for first-year students to kind of get involved, get to see what the city's really like. Um, I mean, just see the different aspects of what we're trying to teach at Huron. Right? This idea of understanding and leading with heart. That's all it was. And... I think it's, uh, that does it for me. Really, really well said, Noaz. Thanks for that. And yeah, I mean, it sounds like uh, you're overcoming the, the challenges COVID has thrown at you pretty, pretty well. So that's great to hear. Now we do have some more targeted questions um, as opposed to kind of group questions. So I'll, I'll, I'll identify you uh, based on each question. Uh, one attendee is just asking you generally, were any of you at Ivy? And yes, Kai, I believe was at Ivy. She did attend, uh, do our dual degree program with Global Studies and the Ivy HBA program. Uh, but my question to you, Kai, that I've been given is, you know, you've been at MasterCard for about five years now, I think you mentioned. And so when looking to hire, what factors do you or your organization look for in a strong candidate? Yeah, and I think, I mean, we do hire a lot of people. So, um, and I've done a ton of interviews with like with new grads and, and folks coming at right out of the university and trying and looking for their first position. So 
I think a lot of what we really look for are similar things that you'd actually learn being at Huron, right? It's more of the softer side. There's a level of kind of being able to be comfortable with numbers and, um, you know, be able to kind of think logically that's important um, at any job, I think. But we're also looking for people who are really curious, people who are interested in learning, are good communicators, whether that means you know, how you write or how you're talking to people um, that we could think, you know, that we could trust you with a client conversation or a client relationship. Um, yeah, I think really just, you know, having those leadership skills and, you know, being out there involved in things is really important, but also then showing that you're a team player and you're collaborative, which I think are all things that um, Huron is really, really strong with. So, I know when I was interested in going to Huron, there are so many cool extracurriculars that you can get involved in, that you can lead, you can actually start things too. So volunteer, yeah, this great volunteer club, like we were part of starting that club and it's so cool to hear about how it's um, still going and still doing lots of great things out there in the community. So um, yeah, you can really have a lot of space to be a leader and um, just be with your, you know, be with your, be with your classmates and, and actually get to know people um, as people versus just, you know, kind of being one of many. I love that you talked a lot about the importance of different soft skills or human skills aside from just mm. the degree and the grades, you know, almost all of the criteria was based on that. I think that's a huge takeaway for our audience here today. You need to have an educational environment university that definitely helps you develop those kind of skills. So thanks a lot, Kaya, for that insight. Uh, Drew, the next question is for you. So, you know, you studied political science, just like me, shout out political science. Uh, and, you know, you entered a whole career in business. There's a huge misconception among many students and parents that the only way to enter the field of business is to have a business degree. So in your opinion, Drew, how do you feel a liberal arts education prepared you for your career? Yeah, it's a great question. And, and I think I'll start just by saying, you know, no matter what career you go into, if you think there aren't going to be politics involved, you're in for, a, for an interesting surprise. <laughs> <laughs> every career is, it can be, every business can be political. Um, no, but uh, it's a fantastic question. And I think I'll sort of talk about two, two main things, one of which I, I, um, I mentioned earlier, which was there's this critical thinking piece. Right. I think any liberal arts education in the world that's sort of advertising itself, if it had to pick one one uh, term, it would be critical thinking in bold, uh, all caps. Um, you know, being able to look at material that you're learning about uh, something put in front of you for the first time, whether it's a chapter in a textbook or a financial statement or a, a presentation on something you have to listen to that you, you've never seen before in your life. There is a big difference between just, you know, listening, have sort of in one ear, thinking about a little, going out the other, okay, or reading something and just sort of, you know, processing, not not properly digesting. There's a missing piece there, which is understanding what it really means, right? What the implications are beyond just the text or or the presentation. What does what does what I'm learning? actually mean for the world, for, for society. I won't get too nebulous and put everyone to sleep. Um, that's a very big deal, right? And, and I think to, to you know, advance in, in your career, especially in, in business lines that are, can be very high pressure, you want to be able to demonstrate not just that you can do entry-level tasks, but that you actually understand the significance of what you're doing and how to take different tasks you're doing for a client to the next level and add value for them, right? That all boils down ultimately to critical thinking. Because if I'm looking at something to do with accounting, you might think that's boring, that's just about the numbers. It's not, it is about the numbers, it's about what the numbers mean. And understanding that two plus two equals four, sure, that's very important in accounting. Understanding what those two numbers equaling four means for a business and for profitability, that means a whole lot more for a client. Uh, and the second thing, I, I don't want to ramble on too much here, so I'll be short with this one, is, you know, you've got small class sizes in a liberal arts education, you know, one-on-one -on -one time with, with experts in their field, professors, uh, you get to know your classmates, and you get called out too. You're expected to learn uh, things on very short timelines, understand them, and guess what? Next time you're in that classroom, the professor might stand in the front, call on you and say, okay, explain to me what that chapter was about. That kind of pressure, although it can be intimidating, does incredible things for your personal and professional development, right? To be courageous enough to stand up and, 
take your best guess, right? Based on what, how you've applied that, those critical thinking skills. So that I think are two of the biggest things that have helped me so far in my career. Once again, another really important takeaway for our students watching this here today. And thanks a lot, Drew, for that. Uh, okay, Nawaz, we have a question for you. So what experiences or people at Huron, um, maybe an internship, an extracurricular, a faculty member or a staff member, do you feel were most impactful in helping you achieve your professional success today? Oof. Do I talk about one or can I talk about the whole school? <laughs> I wish we could spend all here talking about the whole school, but maybe pick one or, or two, the most impactful, the, the people or experiences that changed your trajectory, perhaps most significant. Um, I guess the biggest one would have been uh, mentors. Uh, it wasn't as much professors. I had this mentor. Um, her name's Megan Blight. She's, she works at Huron. She's not that famous. I mean, you don't hear about her much, but it, she's involved. She's a great person. Um, for context, Megan Blay is yeah, the vice president of the university. Well, <laughs> great person. Um, it was my first uh, mentor at Huron. Um, that's how I got the internship. And I guess one of the things that really kept me at Huron was the fact that people had really genuine personalities. And when you meet Megan, you kind of see that. Um, in that way, it was a great place to just grow and learn and get an idea of what the outside world would be like. Because there's expectations in the real world that you have to be fulfilling, right? There's two things, credibility and integrity, right? You gotta do what you got, you say you do, you will, and you have to be honest about things, right? You can't just uh, make up stuff. So being at Huron, you kind of have that same environment, but you, you understand that these people have met you face to face, these people are helping you grow. They understand that you're at your learning phase right now. So yes, there's times where they'll support you and it's not the end of the world, right? You won't lose your job. You will get the help that you need and you will get the support that you need. It's not, I guess, the same intensity. It's almost like a prep run for the real world as we call it. Um, and it was a great experience, you know, getting to get that kind of, you know, home environment or home field advantage at Huron, practicing and doing the same exact thing I'm doing now, uh, knowing that I'll be okay at the end of the day and I've got people around me that will help me get through this part and help me learn so I can be ready when I'm put to the test. So that part was great. Um, I think it still goes, right? Uh, you get to meet new people and it's similar personalities and you respond in a certain way. So I think be, having that part really helped out. And the fact that one of the biggest things with Huron is we have really small classes, which allows you to kind of speak up. You don't get to just sit at the back of the class and be quiet. It's, uh, it's not a go to class, just look at the screen and go home. It's more get involved, you know, try to see what someone else is saying, what their point of view is. Uh, talk to your professors, you know, get to know them after hours. Know, see what they're all about. You know, they've got great personalities. Uh, we've got a lot of interesting people at Huron uh, from a lot of different backgrounds. You'll see musicians that have become professors of political science or business. Uh, so you get to see people with different experiences that have, they've brought along with them. And learning from them, you kind of amass this personality of uh, different skills and different ideas that you can choose between and decide how you're going to interpret it instead of just going with the status quo and uh, seeing the world as it is, right? You get to see a broader vision, right? You get to see where people have come from, their different paths, uh, different struggles, different obstacles that they have had to overcome to get where they are, how different their life looks now versus where they started, what they've come to learn and how they're helping shape the world in a positive way. I feel like having all those experiences just sponged into you forcefully, <laughs> it helps you see the world in a more open way, I guess more globally instead of locally. For sure. And it's, I mean, it's, it's really fantastic to see how you're able to be supported by the vice president of the university. <laughs> I know many of us, right, have, um, 
you know, have had those one-on-one -on -one conversations, those references, those mentorships from the vice president herself, from the president. Uh, and, you know, in most institutions, you typically can't even get to the president or vice president's door without seeing three, four doors in the obstacle before you. So it's a really amazing thing that you're going to have here, guys, is, is the, the chance to connect with all levels of the supportive community here at Huron. So we have another question now. And, and Kaya, I'm going to give this one to you because You've definitely done tons of business cases, whether it's a first year business 1220 class here at Huron, throughout your time at Ivy, and you've combined, um, you know, global studies and business together. So we have students saying, you know, am I going to be in a bigger advantage in the job market if I do economics or BMOS? You know, how do I decide my field of interest, finance versus accounting within the business sector? What field of management is in business is the best one? So, I mean, in your opinion, when it comes to choosing subjects or choosing specializations in business, what would your advice be for these students asking these questions live in the chat? Yeah, I mean, I think at the end of the day, it's, you know, you'll make your personal decision on that. But in my experience on the other side, when you're when you're at a company, um, it's not so much what you studied beforehand as like how you're learning and what you're applying now that you're working there. So when I hear the question like BMOS versus economics or some other program, I think it's really like pick what's actually interesting to you. I wouldn't worry as much about what, <laughs> I wouldn't worry so much if you're a motivated person that has a, you know, that's interested and will, you know, take on leadership opportunities. I think you have a really good, you'll, you'll succeed in business no matter what you actually studied because a lot of more technical things are really taught on the job. So um, you don't really have to learn those technical things at school. What you're learning at school is how to think. So when Drew was talking about you know, critical thinking and, and, you know, learning and, and like how to learn and how, what does something mean? That's so true. It's really, you know, getting the, getting the skill set to do that. So um, between economics and BMOS or any other course, I think actually read some of the courses. Oftentimes you'll be able to understand like what actually you're going to be learning about and just pick what you think is more interesting. <laughs> so um, that would be my, my personal advice, but um, yeah, definitely don't, don't worry too much about what the program is. I think if you're interested in it and um, you're a motivated person in general, you'll, it, it won't really impact your career options that much. I know that's exactly, exactly the words I think students needed to hear. I mean, we always <laughs> get questions in our admissions office about which program should I apply to? You know, am I stuck in one program or the other? And really, really, there's not one right subject for everyone. It, all that matters is the right subject for you. So thank you for echoing that, Kaya. Really great uh, feedback. So Drew, we have an audience question for you. Um, what appealed to you about doing your studies at Huron versus Western Main Campus? Any regrets? Wow, uh, it's a great question, uh, and I think I can I can be pretty succinct in my response. Right, you get the best of both worlds if you go to Huron. I mean, I'm sure all the attendees have have heard this from you know if you've been to a presentation being given by Moose or one of the other recruiters, they they talk about how as a Huron student you are also part of the wider Western community, and that's absolutely true. Um, you know, your student card you get if you swipe in the cafeteria, um, et cetera, and, and to get on the bus and stuff, that's, that's a Western University um, student card. Uh, and, you know, you can go to those libraries, you can use, you know, uh, you can go to those restaurants, whatever, you can take courses over there. Uh, in fact, I'll, you can use the gym, I, the list goes on and on. In fact, I'm not sure I can think of any one thing that you are restricted from. Um, so quite literally, you know, you can have your cake and, and eat it too. And of course, the, the other side of that is not only do you get access to those Western resources, but the, the Western students, they don't get the same level of access to the Huron resources, right? So when I'm talking about, you can, if you want, you can go to those, you know, four, 400 seat lecture halls and, and take those interesting electives that, that Western office uh, offers, I should say, absolutely have that option. But it's it, you, they don't get the same privilege that you do, which is you know that those small class sizes with the expert level you know professor led courses, those um, other amenities that that sort of tight knit community feel, access to the alumni database, things of that nature. So uh, I don't have a, a single regret in the world about uh, about going to Huron instead of main campus. Um, I got to enjoy the privileges of both. Well said, Drew. Thank you so much for that perspective. It's, uh, it's something many, many students uh, ask us about for sure. 
So uh, we have some many more audience questions here. Uh, and, you know, um, Nawaz, a question for you, since you are at Scotia McLeod, uh, you know, students really want to know more about investment management. Um, so, you know, what would you tell a student interested in this field? Like, how would they uh, successfully navigate and, and, and become involved in investment management? And what are some skills or characteristics that they can work on during their undergrad to prepare them for this? Right. I guess I'll start with this. Uh, the two most important characteristics that you need to work on or, I guess, learn are integrity and credibility. Those two things are essential in the industry, right? When you're dealing with someone's hard earned money, someone's life saving, they expect you to have a certain level of care, right? And trust is really important in the industry. The whole client relationship uh, model, it's actually built around client and advisor trust. So trust is a big thing. The idea of when you promise something or when you've made a commitment, um, you really have to own up to that because it sets the tone, right? It's the idea of you, it takes a long time to earn a client's trust, but it will take a one dishonest thing or just playing it in the gray line to lose it. So the trust part is really important. There's zero, there's zero mistakes there. Um, I guess to prep yourself to get into the industry, one of the main things that the industry requires is the Canadian security scores. That gets your foot in the door. If you've got the Canadian security scores done, you can go anywhere in investment management and at least ask for an interview because you're already qualified to start working. Without that, you can't actually go on and be taken seriously, right? because there's a lot of people that, it's a really competitive industry and there's a lot of people that want to be in the role, especially right now when it's a really interesting time, right? It's tough, it's difficult, but it's not something we've seen before. And for someone that's just out of university and wanting to get more experience in this field, it is the best place to be. I, I feel like in the last year, I've learned a lot more than I have in the past four years. Right? It's the idea of being at the right place at the right time. And my biggest, I guess, suggestion would be to look at the Canadian security, security scores. It was something I did in my fourth year. Uh, took me, I guess, more or less most of the first semester. Um, I did it in one of the semesters and while maintaining a full course load, um, the, yeah, there was times where I wasn't able to manage it all, but with having those small class sizes, I was able to go to my professors and ask for some extensions, uh, maybe a makeup or just handing something in earlier rather than later, just to get it off my plate, right? I was able to sort of plan out how I'm going to fix an extra 1.0 credit on my own hours into my full course load. And honestly, it was no problem at all, right? Everybody was really helpful. I got my security scores done. And um, I think that was one thing that really set the tone for the employer or my advisor that I was inter interested in the industry. So I guess that would be the suggestion. You know, Nawaz, I think when you talked about trust, um, I really, really understood that because we've seen so many employers tell Huron, you know, after the 2008 recession and what everything that happened in the financial sector, right? People with integrity and trust it's more important than ever. And so, you know, that was a huge reason why Huron has this vision of ethical leadership and being a leader with heart. So, you know, seeing you recognize that and tell the students that I hope uh, tells them a lot as well about what they need to do, not just in their academics or their extracurriculars or when it, more so when it comes to their own uh, integrity. So thanks again for mentioning that. Um, Kaya, we have a question for you. Do you think going to Ivy was helpful? Um, does it make a difference on the resume? Uh, as many of you may know, Huron offers dual degrees with all programs at Huron with the Ivy Business School. So Kaya, what do you think? Um, I think it was definitely a helpful decision for me personally. I don't think, um, on the flip side, if I hadn't gone to Ivy, I think I would have still been afforded a lot of opportunities with just Huron. So. I wouldn't put it down as something that you absolutely have to do if you're interested in starting your career in business. That's, that's really not the case. And the panel that we have today really shows that. Um, 
that being said, I think for me, I think it, it really did help kind of combine my uh, more liberal arts education with some really practical business skills that are helpful. So I would, it, it's kind of funny, like I'd have a class of about accounting or financial management. And then like my next class I'd run over to Huron was called critique of capitalism. So I think it was a really interesting balance to have um, those two types of, of subjects um, together. Uh, I think I think like anything you do, it, it is helpful to have on your resume. Um, and I gain a great network both from Huron and from Ivy. So if it's something you're considering, I definitely, um, for me personally, it worked out really well. And I think I learned a lot, but um, I have got a lot of friends that I met at Huron who did, you know, business courses at Huron or didn't do business at all and are, are very successful as well. So um, it's not the be all end all for sure. And that's wonderful. And yeah, the diversity of courses that you've taken surely is a very, very interesting match and prepares you for all kinds of perspectives. That's really great to hear. Um, and, and Drew, we have a question for you. So uh, one of our audience members just asked a live question. What is considered a strong profile when applying to an M&A position? <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, a, it's a great question. Uh, what I'm going to do, just because I, I imagine not everyone on the call is interested in, in M&A, I'll, I'll talk just a little bit more broadly, um, but sort of tie M&A in. I mean, I think more and more, right, um, is, uh, different lines of work in business, uh, including finance and M&A, are looking for their candidates to be well-rounded. Right. So Nawaz talked about how, you know, here are a few certifications, the Canadian Securities course, you know, a few things you can do to put yourself um, to put your resume ahead of the game from a qualification technical skill point of view. But that's only half the battle. Right. Nawaz also mentioned that this piece around integrity and trust. Right. That has to do in an interview. You can't really assess easily whether you can trust someone. It's, it's a bit of a vibe. Thing, right it's a bit of a how human do you seem can you do you seem like you have the faculties of empathy right these are things that are, uh, interviewers and, and people in the industry are actively going to be trying to assess as they recruit you um, and those are the kinds of things that kind of emotional intelligence uh, that you develop by by being a being a human right by by not just you know burying yourself too hard in in the technical material and doing exams and, and certifications and frankly following, you know, spending all your spare time focusing on, you know, reading economics literature and the Wall Street Journal, that's not going to make you the top, the top applicant in a role in finance or in business. Um, having that kind of, uh, having that side of it, that genuine interest in that, that industry knowledge, that's going to make you qualified. But what's going to make you a really, really competitive candidate is uh, having other characteristics that a recruiter is going to relate to, right? Play some sports. Uh, or at least follow some sports, right? Um, be interested in cooking, uh, be interested in other fields, right? Have a passion for history, right? And I think that ties in something Kaya mentioned earlier as well, which is to say, don't stress yourself too much now about having a resume at the end of your time at Huron that says 4.0 GPA in economics or business to get a business or economics line of work. Uh, you know, having a good GPA is important. That's probably the most important thing but being able to demonstrate that you uh, have sort of a, a determination in following things you're passionate about and that you're gonna bring that passion, whether it's in political science or business or philosophy or even something like religious studies, right? That you'll bring that same passion to your line of work in M&A or in, uh, elsewhere in business. That, that's what makes you a, a very competitive candidate on top of those technical skills. And that's something that Huron can give you. Fantastic. Thanks so much, Drew. And we have a final question for all of our panel members. Uh, favorite fun memory from your student days at Huron? Uh, Kaya, let's go with you first. <laughs> oh my gosh, there's so many. Um, one of them was definitely um, spending the night, like we did like a little sleepover with where we, a bunch of friends. There's a sort of main area in campus. I hope one Sunday you might be able to see the campus. Um, called the student activity center and so it's just like this big room full of couches and a bunch of us just had like a really classic sleep over there one night it was really fun uh, but that otherwise i <laughs> otherwise i have a lot of my favorite memories are from being a part of the girls flag football team so um i'm not sure if that's still uh still part of uh, student life right now but um was certainly a big part of mine so we, we practiced pretty intensely it was an intramural team but we were on the field like a couple times a week and um, had a lot of fun together. So that was uh, a lot of my favorite memories come from that. 
That was awesome. I definitely remember the team being uh, very successful in the intramural league at Western. We won. We won. Yeah, that I year. remember that. That was, that <laughs> was, was an epic year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can't forget that. And uh, Nawaz, what about you? Um, I guess mine would be just being a tour guide. It came out of nowhere. Um, wasn't something I was planning on doing. Um, sort of, sort of just caught my eye, and I figured, hey, I'll just go up and see if they're looking for more people. Um, Really enough, with the connection that worked out, and uh, that was the best experience I've had. Um, I got to see all these prospective students come in, uh, check the place out, like I did once. Um, that was a long time ago, uh, about six years ago at this point. It was it all it took was one visit to Huron, and the person that introduced me to it. So I figured, hey, maybe I get to make a difference and see if I can convince someone else to take this journey because I loved it. It was great. I mean, I learned so much and it uh, really showed me the different, I guess, sides of everything. It, it was great. So seeing all these students come in and you know, giving them the little lessons I've learned, it was something that was really fulfilling. So that'd be my favorite memory. I can only imagine it was. It's a big reason why the tour guide position on campus is definitely one of our more popular ones among our students for on-campus jobs. Thank you for that. Uh, Drew, what about you? I think I might have to cheat a little bit here, Moose, because honestly, there, there genuinely are too many good memories to pick. I think just one. Um, at the end of the day, you know, here on, there are so many different things to get involved with, even just some of the things we've talked about on this call alone, right? This, the sheer breadth. We've talked about volunteering opportunities, uh, part-time employment opportunities, right? Being a tour guide and, and volunteer, yeah. Um, athletic opportunities. Uh, admittedly, uh, I was not allowed to join the, the girls' flag football team, but there were other <laughs> intramural sports and, and opportunities to, to be on a team with other people in residence and at Huron. Um, you know, there was also things that, that weren't as organized, right? Um, you know, on your spare time, Kaya mentioned the Student Activity Center. Um, there's also, you know, when people become of legal drinking age, there's also an on-campus pub uh, at, at Huron. Not a lot of people know that, um, which is which can be a very, very fun place, uh, you know, to grab a beverage with, with, a, with a friend after class, um, as well as one-off events, right? Huron has a formal for its students. It's got uh, all kinds of fun events throughout the year. Um, and I think one of the sort of the, the cherry on top of that for me is the fact that ooh, people stay so involved and engaged with it, with the alumni community that I get to be a part of things like this, where I'm on a, a Zoom call with people that I knew during my time at Huron. And, and every time I, I see someone I knew, it, it jogs a memory, a really, really good memory of my time there. And it sort of brings a smile to my face, right? So uh, the, the big takeaway there is too many memories to pick one. Um, and, and frankly, I'm excited for, for the next generation of Huron students uh, who get to be involved with some of that stuff. Well, Drew, you made me uh, super nostalgic for our time together here on just thinking about the, the memories we've had there, uh, and I miss it very much too. Well, folks, there you have it. You know, uh, many of our alumni from a diverse range of degrees and academic backgrounds working at Deloitte, Scotia McLeod, and MasterCard sharing with you today their perspectives, their advice, and their stories uh, as you begin to figure out what you'd like to do for yourself in your studies and in your careers. I want to take a moment just to remind you all that, you know, even if we didn't have time to answer your question today, you are more than welcome to reach out to our team here at Huron. We are more than happy to book a personalized time to speak with you and or your parents to talk about right fits for you, future careers, and the possibilities ahead of you if you choose to enroll here at Huron. Our open house as well is taking place on Sunday, November 15th from 10 a.m. Eastern time to 1 p.m. Eastern time, where you can attend sample lectures, talk to professors in different programs, meet more current students, and learn from our career development team exactly what they do to help prepare you for many different careers. On behalf of all of us here at Team Huron today, I'd like to thank you so much for joining us for this panel discussion. Wherever you are in the world, stay safe and have a great day.